How's it going everybody? And welcome to a deck recipe. I know I just did one last week. Or actually Tuesday. But um I had to put up some content. One. Two, I wanted to show off this deck. And three, um what was three? Three three three. Oh, and this is I already put up two duels of this deck, so I'm gonna put up this deck recipe, so. Yeah. If you haven't seen, uh, you check, if you haven't seen this deck in action, you can go check out Ten Bruce's channel, where the video is called Misplay, Misplay, Misplay. There's also Spirits. Oh, this is a. I have three videos of it, actually. One where I'm battling a random person, and another one where I'm battling Bruce, and another one where I'm tagging with Bruce. I have a lot of videos of the spirits. Anyways, this is my spirit deck. It's not the best, and it is still being worked on. But this is a way better version than the first time you guys might have seen it. And I am wanting to show this off because, other than Bruce's dark spirits, this is probably the first uh, spirit deck to see on decky duels that are. Really based around, like, you know, just all spirited out. Of course, there had to be other cards because there's not all the greatest ones in this, so. Let's get to the deck recipe. I'm boring you guys now. <laughs> uh, we have three Zora Priest. What her ability is, is that she can attack up to the amount, yeah, up to the amount of monsters your opponent has once. So she can attack. Uh, you let's say your opponent has three monsters. You can attack all three, up to one time only. So this card is great against a lot of things. It's 1700 beater. Um, also, if your opponent's doing the thing where they go shiny angel, shiny angel, whatever, this card can get past those kind of things because you can attack shiny angel brings out another shining angel since it's a new uh, amount of monsters on the field it's not really a new amount it's probably the same amount but since there's a new monster you can attack it and then keep going until you get to the last one in the chain so you'll see the mystic tomato that I attacked uh, wait no I didn't record that one oops but yeah I attacked the mystic tomato and then I attacked into a dark resonator so it's pretty good also, another thing to keep in mind with spirits, they cannot be special summoned. So your pony can't monster reborn them and can't use Goya to get them back. So that's a bonus. Also, uh, I'm not playing it, but you can play it Honest in this deck and it works with Zero Priest because uh, you attack all your opponent's monsters and drop it Honest on one of the biggest ones and you can wipe out your mo opponent's monsters and do like big damage. And there's cards that do piercing too. Um, another thing is, the turn that they're summoned, they will return to the hand at the end phase, unless their effect is negated by any card. So, that's a good thing to keep in mind. It's the turn they're summoned, they'll return back to your hand. If you keep them on the field longer than, and this goes for any of the spirits, if you keep them longer than the turn, if you negate their effect, or find a way to keep them longer than the turn, and when they're face up, uh, it says normal summon or flip some face up. So you can't just set which set will keep them longer, but once they're flipped face up, they'll return at the end phase. They'll still have attacked, I think. I don't remember that rolling if they're attacked and your defense is too high. I think they just stay after. I don't know. But yeah, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, one breaker, he takes out the back row, you put a counter on him when you normal summon, and he gets 300. What you mainly want to do is you want to, like your opponent has two, one back row. You usually want to tackle this first, then blow out the back row, because usually if it's anything, like uh, mirror force or negate attack or anything, they'll probably waste it on this. And then you won't have to waste your counter and you'll still have a 1900 beater. But 
yeah, that's pretty much all you really need to know with this card. This card is pretty good if you're running into a Thunder Kings a lot, which uh, this deck doesn't really have the power. It doesn't really have to worry about Thunder King, but what he does is you choose a number from one to three, and you mill those cards, and he gains 500. So he goes up to 1,500 more attack points. And when he's destroyed, he can you draw a card. Also, mostly you'll see this card played when people are playing Debris Dragon, so they can just pull out the field and. Light Sworn's gonna be this card pretty well too. Um, they might not always, but they can. So that's a pretty good thing to keep in mind. I mean, you get plus one off the draw. You get up to 1900. It's pretty good. So it's limited because of Light Sworn's being able to spam it. Uh, Chaos Sorcerer. I've already gone over this. You ban stuff. Yeah. You can banish one light and dark, special summon it. it. Another thing to keep in mind, if this was brought out, it says must be first special summoned. So if you bring this out by banishing a light and a dark, and it goes to the graveyard, you can use Monster Reborn to bring it back. Also, um, this card just banishes face up cards. I, you don't really, I didn't need to tell you that. Cyber Dragon, these are one of those cards where you can switch the picture fun thing. Uh, but uh, what's it called? You can special summon this if you control no monsters and your opponent controls at least one. And it has to be in your hand. Now Dark Dust Spirit, like all spirits, returns to the hand at the end phase, but what it does is when it's summoned, fi uh, flipped, summoned, or, no actually it's just that's what face up. Whatever. Uh, normal summon or flip face up. It'll blow up all monsters on the field except this card. This card is used a lot in, uh. I don't remember. Is that. Oh, yeah, uh. This card is used in spirit decks and, uh. Mar yeah, monarchs. Because of monarchs' ability to keep tributing monsters and, like, okay, you can blow up whatever you feel like. It's pretty good. Only problem is it bounces back and. It's level 6, so you do require a tribute or the field spell. Wait, what? Oh, crit. I hit L. Oh, that's cool. Anyways, Gore is, if you have a... I do run Gores in here. That's surprising. Okay, if you have an empty field, when you take battle damage or effect damage, your effect will vary. So you can special summon this. If it was by battle damage, you summon a token who's light, which you can use with Honest. And its attack and defense become the damage you took, the battle damage. So if there's an axe of despair with a breaker and they attack you, you take 2600 and you drop a token, and you drop this and you have a token 2600. Gores is really not a fun card to run into, but you just have to know how to get around him easily. Also, effect damage if your opponent's playing burn and you have no cards on the field, it'll be able to special summon itself and you flick damage equal to the amount you took. Uh, of course, that bit, that being said, if you take 8,000 in one turn, you obviously lose before this would go off, I believe. So, there's not really a draw feature. Oh, what the heck, computer? I look down at you for a second and you start acting up. I hope nothing about this was messed up. Anyways, that's not about Gores. It's a big old beater and it's really worth having in a stack. Also, the token can be used for summon of Dark Dust Spirits or you use Gores and summon the next one. Hino Kagu Suchi. He is a really main boss monster of the deck. When I say boss monster, it usually refers to the monster that has the biggest attack points in the deck and usually don't want to be facing against when it comes to people's monsters. So what you usually want to do with this is you want to Forbidden Chalice it after it's summoned, I think. Right. No, you summon it and then you go and punch the opponent's monster in the face with it or just damage your opponent somehow. And then, because of the bow damage they took, they will discard their whole hand the next draw phase. So, like, let's say they have five cards. When you attack them, 
they take damage when it comes to their draw phase. Before they draw, yeah. <laughs> so five cards go to the grave. They draw their one card. They have one card compared to <laughs> whatever you have on the field. And that's basically what this does. And it's 2,800 attack and uh oh yeah, it's effect. I w I didn't know he had so much defense. I guess you could also set this, and your opponent. Well, if your opponent's really smart about it, wouldn't run into a card you just tributed two monsters for. But you could probably do something where you can make them force them to attack a monster, and then like trade over a berserk gorilla if you have one or something, and make them attack this, and they take 900 and discard a whole hand on their next draw phase. That is pretty devastating. I did not know I had that much defense. Uh, so let's see. This card is really good for Robin Goblin, but because I don't run it, I just don't want to really talk about it too much. But the Robin Goblin effect would make the discard every time it's attacks. So what this does is, it you must do this. So you must attack your opponent directly. It does 700 damage each turn, basically. Unless your opponent stops over trap. Also, um, Robin Goblin, if you had it, this card works with it very well because your opponent will discard every time you attack this. So, yeah. Two of them. Oh, yeah, two. He knows. Three Zoras because it's main beat sticks uh, and everything else, like, limited. You don't need more than one of this. You really don't. Um,. Right back to the monsters. Uh, I'm very off today. Very off. Uh, one Marshmallow does a thousand damage. You stall and it's tribute, tribute, tribute material for Hino and Dark Dust. And we got Sangin. There's the fact you can add 1500 or less. Basically, you search out like everything in this deck, kind of. Well, not really. Just Spirit Reapers, the Stall ones, and the what's the name? Rabbits. Uh, yeah, nothing really much other than that. Spirit Reaper. It does basically the same thing Marsh does, except it doesn't do a thousand damage. It stays on the field because it can't be destroyed. And a little fun effect of this: if it attacks your opponent, and does damage you make them discard a card. But the downside of this over a Marshmallow is one, if they brain control this, it gets destroyed. They target with anything gets destroyed. But that could be a bonus too, because then your opponent can't stall you out with um, marshes and all that. And they can't tribute this apparently. If they try to do brain control way. Uh two Tragodias. I know I run a gores but when you take battle damage, either, even if you have stuff on the field, you special summon it. It acts like Slifer, where you gain attack equal to the amount of cards in your hand, so you gain 600 attack and defense for each card in your hand. You send a card to your graveyard to take control of an opponent's monster as long as the levels are the same, and you can change this monster's level to, equal, change this monster's level to the level of one monster in your graveyard until your end phase. It's a dark. Oh yeah, you run enough dark sun lights for chaos sorcerer. If you're, I didn't know. I didn't mention that. Uh, one alert darkness. You run enough darks in here, you can banish one. It's not gonna really hurt you too badly. Creature swap. Uh, yeah, that's only one. One creature swap because, well, one it probably would be just a dead draw if you had two. Two, I don't feel the need to run two creature swaps because. It will slow down my deck a little bit because it has a tendency to draw into a lot of spells and traps. And the fun thing about these is that when you creature swap your spirit monsters or mystic box, as you can see there, a spirit monster, your monster will return to your hand and you get a free monster with creature swap. Mystic box was a different thing. Uh, double summon, you can summon twice, but you can only use one of these effects. You only use this effect once per turn. So you can't just go double summon, summon, and double summon again. If you want to do that, use Ultimate Offering. 
but this card doesn't help you out too much. This over alternate offering though, the difference between using this over ulti ultimate offering is one you have to keep on the field, so it kinda isn't really that great, but the other, so alternate offering has that downside, but alternate offering is better because it does have a cost, but you can special summon, or no, normal summon a bunch of stuff as compared to double summon. But double summon is one of those quick get your monsters out. Also, um, what's it called? It's a spell, so you don't have to set it, you can activate it right away. It's not a quick play though, that's a downer. Because I would like this better if it's a quick play. Um, what you usually want to do is you can either do uh, double summon, and you see that field spell there, you can double summon, so you can summon it, I'll blow up every monster you put inside the field, and bring out this, or you can double summon, bring out whatever you really please to bring out, because there's so many monsters that you have choices of, that this card is very liable. Now this is a little nice tech I have in here is exchange. This video is going to be long, whatever. Anyways, there's a little nice tech I have in here. Spirit monsters, when they, as I said, to turn their summon, they bounce back to the hand. But since your opponent doesn't control, since your opponent wouldn't control the monster that you use, uh, what's it called? Since your opponent doesn't control like any of these monsters, that's the thing you need to keep in mind when you use stuff like uh, exchange and all that. Your opponent doesn't control these monsters, so if they say they're gonna bounce back to the hand, then they will bounce back to your hand. So you usually want to keep like a bunch of spirits in your hand, and then use this. You can get a bonus off their hand if they have like heavy storm or something, and they will get stuck with a spirit, and if they summon it. Of course, it'll be a troublesome to deal with your own monster, but on the good side, it returns to your hand at the end phase, so they can't really benefit too much off of it. Uh, two Forbidden Chalice. Uh, oh yeah, in exchange, just you trade one card with each other. This is probably the only time you'll ever see exchange in that deck, usually, because exchange isn't really the best of all cards. You can see, I wonder what cards you see on Time Wizard, Exodia, Mirror Force. I don't know why the opponent would have an Exodia with a hand, but whatever. Okay, so Forbidden Chalice. Uh, any mon you target one monster on the field. Its effect is negated, but the good side is it gains 400. Now, the problem with spirits is they bounce back to the hand end phase, so you use this card and they'll stay on the field. However, you want to do this during main phase 2, or, yeah, main phase 2, when it comes to this, or damaged up, when it comes to this card, you want to do this after its effect activated in battle phase, so it doesn't leave the field, so you have a big old 2800 on the field. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to know. You'd also use this to stop some of your opponent's monsters, like, um, uh, Goyo's not really anything to worry about with this deck, though. Uh, you stop, um, Marsh's Trigodia's effect. Oh yeah, Trigodia's that are hit with this will go back down to zero, and then they'll get 400 because of the boost. So that's a, another good thing to know if you're using this card. Uh, Trunay bounce everything back to the hand. Spells and traps. Uh, this is an interesting. There you go. It is an interesting card. It is Mausoleum of the Emperor. It is a field spell that was introduced in the GX series. What it does is you pay a thousand and you summon a monster without tributing. However, when it comes to monarchs, monarchs cannot really benefit off of this because they don't. You didn't tribute to summon them. So. Anything in this deck can really benefit off this card. Just monarchs can't really benefit off this card if you're playing them. And the downside is your opponent can use it, but it's usually never a problem because they never usually summon anything good other than dragons. Dragons are pretty devastating when we have to deal with this card. Deal with them against this card. Yep. 
Mirror of Yada. Uh, I'm. Oh my goodness. Mirror of Yada. What it does is that. Wait, what? Blah, 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 blah. Oh. This basically stops your monster from. You can choose if you want it to bounce back to the hand or not. That's basically what that does. This. You target one of your monsters, one of your opponent's monsters, monster that you target on your opponent's side of the field is destroyed, and you give them your monster. What you do with this is you can do a number white rabbit attack, activate this card, give them a number white rabbit, you destroy their monster, something like Goyo or something that's troublesome, and you get your white rabbit back. Misco Space Typhoon pulls up a spell or trap. This one, uh, if your monster destroys the monster by battle, and this only works for spirit monsters, it you will gain life points equal to the attack of your opponent's monster. Also, the fun thing about Mirror of Yada. Uh, wait, what does Mirror Yada say? Oh, Mirror of Yada is a 6 m effect. If your monster will be destroyed, you destroy this card instead. But only by battle. So this card is interesting. Uh, if this card would go to your graveyard, well, no. If your monster goes back to your hand, and this card is sent to the grave, you return it back to hand, and you gain life points equal to your the opponent's monster's attack that you destroyed by battle. Pot of Avarice, recycle five cards back in your deck that are monster and draw two. Bounce back two monsters. I've gone over this enough times that I don't really need to explain why I play this. Draining Shield. And here's that. And Draining Shield, you're back. pretty good. Since it's that uses Mausoleum, you have trouble dealing with life points and trying to keep your life points up. Two Metal Reflect Slimes. I, from the wiki, I actually read it. It said that, um, well, that's loud. In a wiki, it said that using these to, uh, trap monsters are actually pretty good because what you can do is you can tribute for your big monsters and also you can stall out your opponent until you get something. So this, I think, is probably one of my favorites to use. It, it, another, th I'm going to tell you about this card in a second. And what it does is special summons itself in defense and it acts as an effect monster. And what it has is is an aqua, water, level 10, and 3000 defense. You can use like miracle fusions and stuff, super polys, and make ab zeros. It's pretty broken with this card. But that's not what we're here to talk about. The, also, another thing to keep in mind you can still heavy storm these because they're treated as trap cards as well. And now that that's over, the effect of the. Because it says effect monster. Is an effect right there. It says this card can attack. That's its effect. So if someone skill drains your mod, that's its effect. The part where it says this card cannot attack. So if you're curious, skill drain doesn't turn this back to a trap or back into the back row. Only stuff that do stuff to trap cards would make this go back to the back row. Like, uh, row decrees and whatever. So, um,. Scrap iron. When your opponent attacks, you can negate one of their attacks, and it goes back face down. However, if you're battling some morgues or yeah, if you're battling a smorg deck, this card will not go back down. It will just go straight to the grave. So watch out. Uh, it comes from starter deck three apparently. <laughs> um, spirits and I did not draw this card in one of my duels. I don't think. What it does is that. You pay 500. Or no, 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 no. I'm about to say this wrong. Okay, when your monster is going back to the hand, you can select one of your opponent's monsters and send it back to the hand too. It works like compulse, but only if your spirit. Oh yeah, it has to be a spirit monster. But yeah, if your spirit monster returns to the hand, your opponent's monster returns back to the hand. Uh, I forget what they said about this card because I think they said something about monarchs or something. You have to worry about with this and some other weird stuff, but yeah, this will get rid of like those annoying synchros that you can't get rid of. Uh, also, like fairy box, you have to pay up. You have to pay 500 life points to keep on the field during each of your standby phase. Otherwise, you destroy this card. 
Uh, that's basically the deck. I'll show you the side deck, and we have a little new tech. We have Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, which every time I suggest you run one if you're running Cyber Dragon at all. Yes, you never know if you're gonna run into a machine-based deck. What this does is you send to the graveyard at, from anywhere on the field a Cyber Dragon and machine type monsters. This card gains a thousand attack points for each one that was sent. And it can get up to, if you're buying gadgets, you can get up to, you have green, red, and yellow. And Cyber Dragon, you get 4,000 attack. Uh, you do not use polymerization for this. And you special summon a spec for your grave, but it will have zero attack points. So there's really no point in doing that. So this is basically just get rid of those machine stuff. Because there are plenty of people who play Ancient Gear, get children on Dragon. And this just wrecks them really badly. I, I'll show it off eventually one day, but it really wrecks them. Um, pretty standard of extra deck. This was before I got all the cards. So there's some really old choices in here. If you wanted to, you could take out Chain Dragon, put um what's it called? Chain Dragon, you put a Brian X in here, whatever. Uh I put this one in here because it seemed pretty good because you use Zora Priest and all three tuner. Or just any light tuner and you can make this. But I'm not gonna go over his effect because you're rarely gonna make it. Uh, another interesting thing is there's no tuners in here. So you're thinking, well, why would I have a side extra deck? Well, the thing is about Yu-Gi-Oh, if you don't have an extra deck, and you're doing a tag or you're doing singles, you never know when you actually need an extra deck to actually win a duel. You Usually, you occasionally want to try to use this whenever you need to use it, not really whenever you want to use it. Well, you could use it whenever you want to, but shut down your opponent. But mostly how you're going to get your tuners is Creature Swap, Exchange, and... Well, not Mystic Box, just Creature Swap and Exchange. That's how you're getting your tuners. And there's a bunch of level 4, 6, whatever it is. Uh, we do not play Monster Reborns in here because we can't special summon any of the spirits. I mean, you could use it for this, 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 whatever. But there's really no point since I'm focusing on the spirits, not really the other monsters themselves. So I'm glad you guys could stick around and watch this, hopefully. If you're hearing this part, you stuck around and watch this whole video. And I'm glad to have shown you this deck. And if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comment box. And I will hopefully catch you guys some other time. This has been DragonX55 signing out.